In the second video, I'm going to show you how to use Adafruit's I.O. Internet of Things dashboard and feeds in order to send information from your Raspberry Pi to this console. Um, then what you can do once you've received the information is you can then create dashboards where you share real time information with other people. For example, the weather. Uh, so let's have a look at feeds first. If you log into your account, you'll probably have something similar to this, um, a default set of feeds. And uh, if I show you mine, I've already um, entered some here. I've already created some here. And what feeds do is feeds are a connection or a feed between your Python program and the Adafruit IO. And uh, you can see here temperature. So I have a temperature sensor on my Raspberry Pi feeds into Python, Python then sends this information to the feed here. And you can see that three days ago, this was the temperature. Obviously the temperature of the CPU, not the temperature in my um, office. So I'm gonna show you how to create a feed. Um, there's a number of ways. The first way would be to go to action, create a new feed, and then write it there. Nice as well to give it a quick description. Like that. So this feed here is called test and I can create it and now test appears in my list. So when I'm using Python and uh, I want to write to this feed here I would use the word or the name test. If you ever want to delete one highlight it, delete the selected feeds. So this way you can delete them, create them, depending on what you need. Now, let's have a look at the Python code. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is to install the Adafruit um, software. And to do this, we're gonna to go to the terminal and you need to write in the following. So sudo pip3 install Adafruit IO, as simple as that. Press enter and that will install the um, software on your Raspberry Pi. So what we're gonna do now is have a look at how to actually send this data from Python. Um, you'll need to obviously open up your Python 3 editor and uh, import the following modules. You're gonna create two variables to store your AIO details and they are here um, obviously don't share these with people um, you can change them fairly easily which is good it also has a nice little feature where you can click on it and then copy and paste the details in uh, rather than having to type them out and I'm going to create an instance here and uh, we're going to try and find the feed called test now I deleted it um, although I created it earlier so what I'm going to do is add another code which is going to create the feed called test. So the program is basically going to look for the feed called test. If it doesn't find it, it's then going to create one called test. And at the moment, I'm not going to send any data to it. I'm just going to run it. And what we should see here is the um, creation of this feed. So I run this. There we go. Look at that, I've got the wrong API code. <laughs> okay, right, so let's try this again. Right, so I'm gonna run this. Okay, so no errors. Doesn't look like lots happened, but let's just refresh this. And uh, what have we got now? You can see it's recreated the test feed less than a minute ago. Excellent. So what I now want to do is send that uh, data. Um, so what I'm going to do is return back to my program file. And we're going to use this simple command here, a simple line of code. AIO send test key 
is the name of the feed. So if it was temperature, if it was temperature, we're going to send this value 42. And what will happen is 42 will appear here. So at the beginning of the video, remember I said this is about sending uh, data from your Raspberry Pi from Python to these different feeds. And obviously we're sending the number 42 to this test feed here. So I'm going to put my code back in. So we run that. Okay, so no errors have appeared and hopefully what this means, the program has worked. It says 42 here. We can click on this feed. It gives you a nice graph and you can see the data, what time it came in, 12.34. Obviously I haven't got any other data, so it hasn't plotted on here. Um, but if we send some additional data, you would see it starts to track and plot a graph. So let's send another value. Let's send 45. And as you can see here then, 45 has come through, starting to plot the graph. You can delete these values if you want to. And if you're sending lots of data, um, this is quite good here because you can use the feed info. Oh, sorry, no, use the feed history. Use this one and you can actually turn the history on and off. You'll also notice if you turn it off, you get a thousand kilobytes worth of data, which is um, probably going to be useful for projects that are putting out a lot of data um, constantly. My weather station is updating every 15 to 20 minutes. So that's not too bad. But if you want something real time, then you could end up with several kilobytes of data uh, in a day. I've just seen that says 100 kilobytes, not 1000. I need to get my glasses checked. OK, so we can keep that. Go back to the feeds here. And that is how you create a feed and send data to it. So what we'll do next is have a look at how to create a dashboard in video three and then pull that information from the feed into your dashboard. Many thanks for watching and uh, many thanks for watching and give it a go.